If we want to create better software faster, what provides the greatest help? Continuous delivery or DevOps? That's a real question that I get asked all of the time. As I once said in a previous video, I think that these are two allies in a common cause. Each is trying to achieve the same end. But that doesn't mean that I think that they're equally good at achieving it. So, which approach helps most to achieve our ends of better software faster? Oh, and as a hint, I'm probably a bit biased. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. First, thank you to our channel sponsors, Harness and Equal Experts, who are helping us to grow the channel. Please do check out their links in the description below. If you'd like to know more about how to achieve continuous delivery and DevOps, do check out my training courses, which now include a couple of new free ones. There's a link in the description for those too. In this episode, I want to explore why I think that using continuous delivery is a more effective way of thinking about building great software and assists us in making the transition in how we work to a higher quality, more efficient approach. I should begin by conceding that I believe that the destination for great continuous delivery and great DevOps is the same. Uh, but I believe that continuous delivery thinking helps to give us uh, more aid in reaching that destination. You can see more about what I think the destination should be in some of my other videos, which I'll, I'll link up here. But fundamentally, the goal that we're looking for is to create better software faster. DevOps tends to begin with culture and practices. Uh, Amazon defines DevOps like this. Uh, DevOps is the combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increase an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity, evolving and improving products at a faster pace than organizations using traditional software development. Um, Wikipedia describes it like this. DevOps is a set of practices that combine software development, dev, and IT operations, ops. It aims to shorten the system's development lifecycle and provide continuous delivery with high software quality. I confess I like the Wikipedia definition quite a bit more, but in terms of our discussion here today, it presents something of a problem because it defines DevOps in terms of continuous delivery. It says, it aims to shorten the system's development life cycle and provide continuous delivery with high software quality. You can't shorten the software development life cycle more than making your software always ready for release, which is part of the definition of continuous del delivery, which is even described later in the same Wikipedia page. So that's a bit redundant. You can't maintain your software always in a releasable state if the quality is poor. That statement doesn't really make much sense. So what the Wikipedia DevOps definition is really saying is it aims to achieve continuous delivery. Which I definitely agree with, uh, but doesn't really help us in differentiating the two different ways of thinking about this. So if the destination is the same, why does any of this really matter? Well, part of my difficulty in talking about this topic is kind of because of who I am. I am probably best known as one of the authors of the Continuous Delivery book. And so it's very easy for you to misinterpret what I'm saying here as somewhat self-serving on my part, which it probably is in some sense. But I don't think that's the reason why I believe this. My problem with the terminology is a practical one, uh, not an emotional one. The way that DevOps frames the problem is with a bunch of solutions. Uh, you have to remove the barriers between Dev and Ops. It's about collaborative culture, small teams, and automated testing giving continual assurance, as well as a bunch of other useful, valuable ideas. They're all good ideas. I talk about many of them all of the time, but why do they matter? If I did all of these things, but the software that I created was worse, or I created it more slowly, who would care that I was great at DevOps? 
If I did different things, had big teams, no testing at all, but the software that I created was higher quality and I created it more quickly, unlikely as that result might be, wouldn't that be better? It seems to me that the outcome should matter more than the mechanism or approach that achieves it. The list of ideas that DevOps describes are good ones, but they are only advice to achieve a better outcome. They aren't really a model for how to do that. In continuous delivery, our goal is to continuously deliver value to our users quickly and sustainably. We aim to optimize the whole process from idea to working valuable software in the hands of our customers and users. If we can achieve that, however we achieve it, we're doing well. If we can't do that, then whatever we are doing isn't working or is the wrong thing. So yes, culture and collaboration matter. But they matter because they allow for faster, more efficient ways of working. Let's be clear, they also matter because collaborative, supportive work environments are much nicer places to work. And to ter it turns out that this has some commercial as well as social value too. But the collaboration isn't actually the goal. It's a tool to achieve that goal uh, and a very positive side effect. The goal is to produce better software faster. If I go to a restaurant, my goal is not, I want great ingredients prepared with skill by a team of people working collaboratively and supportively together. I hope that all of these things are true when I go to a restaurant. In fact, I expect that all of these things will be true if the experience is to be a good one because my bias is that this is the kind of thing that's likely to produce a better result. But as a consumer of restaurant services, my objective is that I want a nice meal and I hope that I don't have to wait too long to get it. So how do we motivate the team in the restaurant to do a good job? Well, we leave the detail to them, but I'm going to give them feedback with my feet and my money. If the service is terrible and I'm left waiting at the table for too long, I'm going to leave and find a different restaurant. If the food is bad, I may complain and demand a refund, but at least I'm not going to visit that restaurant again. What has this all got to do with software? Well, let's imagine that you are a development team and you want your managers to allow you to apply DevOps techniques. Is it going to work best if you say, we want to have small teams, we want to collaborate more, we want to break the silos, we want to automate the testing, we want to build deployment pipelines, or is it better to say, we want to create better software faster? Is it better to go to a non-technical CEO and say you need DevOps or you need to be able to continuously deliver valuable software to your customers? This is the difference between thinking about outcome rather than mechanism. To technical people, DevOps is a cooler sounding name, a bit more jargony and we do like our jargon, but it only makes sense if you know the jargon. Being able to continuously deliver value is not jargon, it's a statement of intent. But still, why does this matter? Well, if my focus is on the continuous delivery of value, then I can close no doors to innovation. Uh, I use that, that and that alone as a target to aim for. I can use that target as a tool measuring my progress on the route towards it essentially using that target of the continuous delivery of value as a fitness function against which I can evaluate the change to process, organization, culture or technology. I care about collaborative work environments for lots of reasons, some of them selfish, but the engineer in me cares about them because they shorten the cycle time. I care about automated testing for lots of reasons too, but the engineer in me cares about it because it shortens the cycle time and increases the quality of my output. I care about small teams in part because they are nicer places to work, but the engineer in me cares because they reduce the communication overhead and so shortens the cycle time. When I work with clients to help them adopt continuous delivery, or DevOps if they prefer to frame it that way, my advice is pretty consistent measure what you're doing now. 
in terms of how long it takes to go from idea to useful software in the hands of your users. Apply a more scientifically rational approach to decision making and use it to work to reduce that cycle time that you've identified. I will talk to them about lots of DevOps ideas, but not all, because not all are always applicable at any given time. It's no good saying to a big organization that's bureaucratic in structure, be collaborative. They don't know how. So, in my experience, start with the culture doesn't always work. But reduce your cycle time does. It sounds technical, so it appeals to people kind of immediately. It's certainly measurable. And going from six monthly releases to three monthly releases is a positive step, for which it's not essential to force unwilling dev and ops teams to collaborate. But you don't stop there. I'm also clear in describing the moonshot, the aspirational target that is the ultimate goal. Continuous delivery means working so that our software is always releasable. That means every day you create something releasable. But practically, if you aim for daily releasable things, you'll regularly fail because the feedback cycle is too slow. To achieve something releasable every day, you need to be able to make a change, make a mistake, correct it within a working day. That means that the ultimate target that I recommend for my clients to aim for is to be able to create a releasable thing in under one hour. From commit to releasable outcome. There's no way that an organization can go from six monthly releases to making something releasable in under an hour in a single step. It takes months, often years of learning. It demands improvements in organization, culture, process, and technology. I would bet you a lot of money that anyone that succeeds at this will end up employing a lot of the ideas of DevOps. But continuous delivery provided the guide rails that helped them to get there. For me, continuous delivery is an engineering discipline in the sense that if you follow its advice, you will do a better job. It will guide you to higher levels of performance if you use the power of continuous delivery to take your products live more often and so gain more clearer feedback on what your users and customers make of your product ideas, then that is part of the continuous delivery experience too. The reason why continuous delivery is important in a business context. It won't guarantee your products will find a market but it will guarantee that you will create higher quality products more efficiently, and that means that you'll have a better chance of finding out what works for your customers. Continuous delivery is much more than deployment automation. It's an engineering discipline for software product development. Thank you very much for watching.